um, why we would ask that you be muted um, until we get to that question and answer session. We would love it to see your face um, so you can practice um, your best side because there's probably going to be more opportunities for you to interact with someone professionally um, on, on Zoom for, for the next at least few months. So we're gonna ask you to do that. These are the ladies that I was um, referring to earlier. So Dr. McLaughlin was, is running this and has put together this amazing PowerPoint presentation. She is with Dutchess County Workforce Investment Board. Also from SUNY Dutchess, we have Lorraine Kautz, who is the Workforce Development Liaison for SUNY Dutchess. And we're fortunate to have Mary Jane Bertram, who is the Regional Director of Hudson Valley Workforce Development Institute. And they're in... Um, expertise and wherewithal helps bring all of this information together so that I can share um, it with all of you. Um, so we can go ahead. We talked about that slide where you have the opportunity to ask questions and we can go past that slide as well. And um, we are going to focus today on the health science of physical therapy. So we are thrilled to have with you um, uh, Dr. Feldman, who is a physical therapist and one of his um, new employees, a physical assistant, I believe. Um, and she will be talking to you a little bit about that role. And um, what we do in each of our, our sessions is Dr. McLaughlin actually does this, is put all of this information together because we know that one of the big questions that you may have is if this career is for you and if you, if you will make enough money doing it. So if we can go to the next slide, I can show a little bit about the national average, the New York State average, and our Hudson Valley average. You can see where the openings are, the supply, the demand, what the compensation on average is. And down in the lower right-hand corner, you can see for New York State, the job growth projection, 10% um, growth from 2015 to 20, and a 17% um, percent increase for physical therapists. And in the next slide, you're going to see um, the, the occupation gender breakdown. So you can see that um, while there are more females um, in that field, um, that there's also males in that field. But what I really love about this slide is the, the hard skills and the soft skills. So um, as you know, from when I was just introducing myself, I also supervise business education and the soft skills is something that is heavily um, discussed in all of our courses, your ability to communicate, your ability to um, be compassionate and management, uh, that customer service feel. So your computer literacy, of course, which you all have had to really hone in on during this pandemic. And then, of course, on the left, the specific skills for physical therapy, those hard skills. So focusing on PT rehabilitation. So we're going to hear more about that as we talk to Dr. Feldman as well. But within this, um, we also like to focus, you can go ahead. We also like to focus on the, the types of positions that will lead to becoming a physical therapist. And there's two that we, we're gonna um, highlight here for you. So first, the physical therapy assistant. Again, the same breakdown for the national average, um, the New York state average and the Hudson Valley. And again, it goes over the projections and all of these slides are gonna be available to you on our website, just like the previous session. So I know I'm going quickly, that's because I really want to give us time to talk to Dr. Feldman. And then again, looking at those soft skills, notice that communication is still the top two right there. Um, and then also you see the breakdown for those hard skills. And you can see that the female is more predominant for the physical therapy assistant. And then the, um, we look at where the jobs are, but we also, I'm going to go back to that one. I think we have the physical therapy assistant, but that we'll, we're going to go ahead because I think that's fine. Um, where, where the jobs are, um, the health practitioners um, in uh, hospitals, home care services, nursing facilities. Um, you can see that obviously the offices is the one that's most popular. And I'm sure Dr. Feldman can share with us his experience doing that. And what you will want to know too is do you need a college degree to go to that? So this is definitely a, a yes for that and the type of degree that you need. And Dr. Feldman will be talking to us about that. He has earned his doctor of physical therapy degree. Um, and then we will also, uh, for the physical therapy assistant that I was mentioning, that also requires going to college, but it can be completed in as few as 18 months. We will learn a little bit more about that. 
And so what could you do now? Could you possibly work in a physical therapy office just to try to get a sense if that's the kind of work that you want to do? Can you do that without a college degree? And the answer to that is yes. So even though the no is circled, it's circled because the question is, do I need to go to college to become a physical therapy aide different than an assistant? And you don't. So um, that is definitely a great way for you to try out um, and get some experience in a physical therapy office to find if that's the type of work that um, excites you. So again, tons of information in those beginning slides and I always go quickly through them, but because I know you can go to our website, go to students, go down to the Career Zoom series and all of our presentations and the video will be available on that website for you to go to. But really where I wanna focus our time today is getting to know Dr. Justin Feldman. So Dr. Feldman gave us a ton of information for you to go back and review, and he's gonna to touch on it a little bit. Um, he also has with us today, um, Emily, who has um, just recently started working with him uh, in, in the office. So she's gonna talk a little bit about um, her role in his office and how she has um, gotten there because she is also a career, not also, but she's a career changer. What's really fantastic about the way uh, Dr. Feldman um, helped prepare us for this presentation today is he did a lot of question and answers. So he may or may not touch specifically on those. I know he's not gonna read them to you because we, we have them all here for you to go back to, but if um, there are specific questions that he wanted to share out, he has that information there for you. But without further ado, I would love to um, get our screen backs, have your cameras on so that we can um, get to know Dr. Feldman and hear about his journey in becoming a physical therapist. So if you haven't turned on your camera, we invite you to do so now. Hello, Dr. Feldman, thank you so much. Thanks for your patience. How are you? No, thanks for having me. Absolutely. Uh, so yeah, so um, I'm, nobody's allowed to call me Dr. Feldman other than my grandmother. So uh, I go by Justin, I'm like one of the, one of the more informal people you will ever meet. Um, this is Emily. Emily's a physical therapy student from Columbia. She's with me. She, uh, this will be her last rotation before she graduates and gets to go on to uh, treat people all on her own. Um, and so, and this is only her third day here with me. So uh, we're, we're going trial by fire and throwing her right in. Um, so I really want to make sure to give everybody enough time to ask any questions that they might have, because I think there's a lot of value in that. Um, I will give you a little bit of my background and kind of how I ended up in physical therapy and doing what I'm doing. Um, and then we'll go through and, and, and take questions and see what people want to know. I, uh, I've been interested in medical field, medical stuff for a long time. I uh, played a lot of sports. Um, growing up and it was very evident that if I wanted to have anything to do with sports and athletics, it was not gonna be in playing them professionally. Um, so I decided uh, pretty, pretty early on, I was pretty young um, and my mother was going to physical therapy and there was this person who basically got to torture and inflict pain on my mother and that job immediately sounded very inviting to me. Um, and so I looked into it and I don't know if this is still a thing in school, but we had to take when I was in, I think it was sixth grade. We had to take like a career test and you had to, and, um, I looked in the back and saw what physical therapy was and what the total number you needed in order to get physical therapy and then made the questions add up to that. So that I, when at the end I had to do a research little project on a career, I would pick physical therapy, since that's what I was interested in. Um, and so I, I sort of skirted the system, but it, it worked great. Um, and um, then as I was, you know, got a little bit older, um, I worked as a lifeguard for uh, a long time. And um, when I was a junior in high school, I was challenged by my mother to get a job that would allow me to uh, pay for my own season's pass as a ski lift ticket. And so I got a job lifeguarding um, and then got a job on the ski patrol at the mountain so that I would get to keep the money from lifeguarding and then had a free season's pass. So I accomplished both things. 
Um, and I am still now, I've been on the ski patrol for 22 years um, doing that. And so uh, if, I, if I had to do anything else, that's what I would do. I love being outside and um, it's very related to PT. Um, I think that as a career, as a whole, PT is an incredibly rewarding career. You get to see people when they're not doing so great and help them learn how to help themselves to, to feel better and do better. Um, and it's really rewarding to see people be able to make a change and do things that they either thought they weren't going to be able to do or just feel better in general. I um, mean, everyone's sort of been in been in pain and had something hurt them and knows how great it feels to have it go away. Um, and so it's a lot of fun to be able to be in the clinic every day with people and, um, and do that. When I, uh, so PT school, um, the way I went to school, it was a straight through program. So you basically applied when you were in high school and you were accepted into the program and then you were in for seven years. Um, and that was it. The other way to do it, which is sort of how Emily's doing it, is you can go to undergrad and then apply to grad school after. Um, and so when I was in high school, I was pretty sure that I wanted to go to, into physical therapy since I had cheated on my aptitude exam in sixth grade. And uh, I decided uh, that I got, so I got a job um, as a aide in a PT clinic to make sure that it was what I wanted to do. Um, and interestingly enough, uh, I worked as an aide in a PT clinic. I thought it was fun. I still wanted to go to school for physical therapy, but I decided that I wanted to work in a school as a pediatric physical therapist, um, because I had done some observation hours in a school and I thought, all right, this is, um, they get to work with young kids and young kids are a lot of fun and, um, they, they whine less than adults and, you know, all these things that um, were great about working with kids. And I went to school and all through school, I said, I wanted to be a pediatric physical therapist. And then I got offered a job as the PT for the Washington Capitals when I was leaving school. And I thought, well, you can't really say no to that. Um, and I've been a sports med outpatient PT ever since. Um, I never once worked with kids. Um, I, uh, I don't regret it. I love, um, you know, working with, uh, the population that I work with. Um, and so I worked with the capitals for a year and then it became pretty evident to me that, um, that seemed like a really cool lifestyle on TV. Um, but you were traveling a lot, you were away from home a lot. And when it seems like a really cool lifestyle, a lot of people want to do it. And that means that they don't necessarily have to pay you that well because there's somebody else who's willing to do it. Uh, and so if you want to leave, they don't mind. And so I left. Um, I grew up in this area. I graduated from Arlington and I moved back to this area with my wife and worked in a couple of different offices before I decided that I wanted to work um, for myself. I wanted to be kind of in a gym type setting. So all of our offices are inside of gyms which allows us to have a wider variety of equipment. It gives us access to more space than you might have somewhere else. Um, and when people have pain doing specific activities, it really gives us a unique opportunity to make them reenact those activities. Um, so if somebody has pain kicking a soccer ball, we can bring you out to the soccer field and make you kick a soccer ball. If you have pain squatting 300 pounds, we can make you squat 300 pounds and see what happens. Um, and so it's a really, really, uh, great setting to be able to be in and see, see how people are doing. Um, and as far as fields in the medical profession go, what I think is really unique about physical therapy is that, uh, we spend an hour with all of our patients. So we really get to know people. Um, we see them more frequently than say their primary care physician or, uh, specialist physician does. And so we really get to know them. We get to have a great relationship with them. Um, and that, that's what I like about this setting in specific. Uh, you could work in hospitals. Um, you could work in um, assisted living facilities or nursing homes. Um, and 
I think the unique thing about this setting is how much of a relationship we get to form with people before they move on to somewhere else. And so in the hospital, people aren't in there that long, hopefully. And so um, you don't really get to know everybody quite as well um, as we do. And the field of physical therapy in general is sort of evolving a lot recently. Um, when I first went to school, most people needed a referral from their doctor to go to physical therapy. Now, I would say none of my patients have a referral from their doctor. They all can come directly to physical therapy um, on their own. And so that opens up a lot of doors for us to do different things. Um, anybody have any questions? You can go ahead and you can add your questions in the chat. And then while those are coming in, it, um, we'll go back and forth. And, and obviously, Dr. Feldman, you would still have the opportunity to talk. Um, but uh, maybe Emily would want to give a little bit of a background too on um, how her, her path and, and um, why she is where she's at right now. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So uh, very, very different background uh, from Dustin's. Um, I was very much an indecisive person uh, uh, in terms of like what I wanted to do. Nothing ever really felt like the right fit. Um, I was very interested in um, literature and uh, linguistics is, was my, uh, so I uh, have an undergrad in linguistics um, and then kind of fell into a career in product development and I was there for about 10 years. I do not have an athletic background. I didn't ever play sports as a kid or as a young adult. Um, I did start, uh, so a few things actually sort of made me start thinking about physical therapy. One is uh, some personal losses, family loss, and uh, the realization that um, just living your life sometimes isn't enough, you need help. And some of them were given help by physical therapists. Um, and then also I, because of that, I was inspired to start being a little more active. Um, I started doing CrossFit and um, discovered some things about the way my body moved that weren't really ideal. So I started actually seeing Justin. This is now quite a few <laughs> years ago now. But um, so because of the amount of time that he spends with um, you know patients, we were able to spend a lot of time and it just the, the kinds of ways he thinks about the human body and um, how we move and the way our nervous system works was just really, really interesting to me. And I just had that aha moment of, oh, this is actually what I want to do. So um, in my early 30s, I left my old career. I went back to school and I'm now uh, pretty close to graduating. I've had the opportunity to, um, so we do multiple rotations before we graduate. So I've had the opportunity to work with a number of different patient populations. Um, I was able to work with some, I would say uh, outpatient ortho, which is more like the musculoskeletal system, um, but more of a, geri like a, a geriatric setting. Um, I have been able to spend some time working specifically with um, patients with severe cardiopulmonary issues, like people who are awaiting heart transplants or lung transplants, people who are on ventilators. Um, most recently, I was able to work in a hospital in the ICU and acute care working with COVID patients, like severely ill COVID patients. And so a very different setting than what Justin is doing in sports, like totally different, couldn't be like night and day. Um, and the thing that I was really surprised, because I didn't think I would want to work in inpatient. I didn't think I wanted to work with very sick individuals. It just, it just wasn't appealing to me. Um, but the thing that I was surprised by was how immensely rewarding it can be to, as Justin says, you spend more time with patients, you know, in hospital, you don't spend an hour, but I spend, you know, 15 to 30 minutes with a patient and I talk to them and I get to understand like what, what is their understanding of what's going on in their body and help them make sense of it and help them learn how to move in ways that they thought maybe they weren't able to anymore. Um, and so you're working with someone who has a very different problem than the kinds of problems that Justin's patients are, are, are dealing with. But at the end of the day, you're still really helping them and it's, it's just incredibly rewarding. Um, and now I'm, this is day three of uh, working with patients in a sports <laughs> setting. So it's totally different. And I'm like, oh, I still have so much to learn. So it's great. It's, it's, it's really been great. That's great. Thank you so much for sharing um, your experience and how you um, 
landed where you are. We did have a few questions come in and either of you um, can, can address these. The first one was, are you affiliated with any orthopedic um, situation? So um, I don't know, Ms. Gorman, if that, if you, if I am saying that correctly, or if you want to expand on that, or if that makes sense to you, Justin. Um, yeah, we're not affiliated with any orthopedic groups. Um, so we're basically completely independent. Um, we are affiliated with a couple of sports teams um, that we do like work with. Um, and those are sort of unique situations where basically the team will pay us sort of like a flat rate to, um, try and keep people together so they don't fall apart. Um, let's see, what else did I see? What's the difference between, uh, the difference between the PT programs that you, uh, so the PT programs that used to be five years were master's level and those have all transitioned to doctor level. Yeah. They don't exist anymore. Um, that that was a, a switch that basically started. So when I applied to PT school, it was five years. And then while I was in school as a sophomore, they sort of like sat us all in a room and said, good news, bad news. Good news, you leave with a doctorate. Bad news, you're going to be here for a couple more years. <laughs> um, and uh, so that, that was good for me because it meant I didn't have to go back to school for my doctorate. So I got I got in on the ground floor. Um I think the benefit of working in a gym type setting versus in more of an office setting is that people are much more relaxed. So um, when you feel like you're going into a medical office, people get into a specific mindset and they uh, might not offer up as much information. Um, they also might just be a little bit more nervous because it's not a place they go on a regular basis. Um, when people come to the gym on a regular basis, they're a little more comfortable here. Plus I'm just sort of around. And so people see me and they'll say, okay, that's the guy with the bad jokes. And then they will, they feel a little bit more comfortable asking questions um, or opening up about what they're really feeling. Um, let's see what else do I have here? What? So courses. So um, basically this always gets, whenever I have patients who are high school students, I really like scare them with this. So um, I really think that one of the most important things you could, courses you could take, the most important one is physics. Um, I think that goes for no matter what you want to do in life anywhere. Um, I think everything is related to physics. When it comes to physical therapy, as we're looking at the way the body moves and how things work, you can do a lot with physics. And so if I wanna give somebody a weight and I want them to do an exercise, but they can't necessarily hold a heavier weight, but I want the exercise to be harder. If I make them hold the same weight in a different spot, thanks to physics, I can make the exercise harder. Um, and so I can make them, or I could say, Hey, I want you to do a squat. And if I have you hold the weight out in front of you, it actually makes the exercise easier because it acts as a counterbalance. And so you could really use physics to play with everything, um, in, in anatomy or like, um, you know, medicine based fields, everyone has to take this course called kinesiology, which is basically just physics of your body. And you start to look at the way different muscles work and um, your body is basically just a series of pulleys and levers. And so uh, as you go through all of that, physics becomes really important. Um, chemistry, bio, those are all, all important things. Um, but I think that just things you use every day, physics is important. Also, once you own a home, physics becomes very important. Um, so, even, even if you're like, you know, really far off from that, but if you're, you know, got to figure out how to hang that picture and not rip half the wall down, physics is key. Um, let's see, what else do we have here? Um, I don't think it really matters which program you go into, whether you do the straight through program or, um, or you do the apply and then go to grad school. Um, I think the one benefit of going straight through um, is that it, um, tends to end up being slightly fewer 
year, it, it, it works out to be just a little bit less time, um, which over the course of the seven years is uh, less money. So the loans that you end up taking out and the cost of the seven year tends to be less than undergrad followed by grad school. Tends to be just a little bit more um, financially efficient. Um, I went to Ithaca College. Um, so I went to Ithaca College and um, the way their program ran at the time and still runs is that it's the straight through um, program. It's actually, and this is how, how it changes a little bit. So our program was actually only six years. Uh, it just included summers from your junior year on. And so that was where instead of having to, you actually got out and were able to start working and earning a living a, a whole year sooner. Um, so that, that helped. Right. Is there anyone that wants to come off mic and ask questions? Or if you're not comfortable, you can continue uh, to type them in the chat. Give everyone a chance to think. So one thing I didn't share with everyone, um, and, and uh, Justin, you shared this in, in one of your slides, is that uh, our Dutchess County Chamber of Commerce recognized you with the 40 under 40 um, uh, recognition. So congratulations on, on receiving that. Thank you. Thanks. That's a great, great acknowledgement. Um, and the, let's see, I didn't see any other questions come in. Um, you can come off mic if you want to ask any other questions or um, kind of think of questions that have been asked in the past that I can share with you as well. Um, I, I have a question. If you can um, talk for the students who may have heard about physical therapy and occupational therapy, can mm -hmm. you clarify what that difference is and, and what might be a deciding factor between those two? Sure. Um, so my wife is actually an occupational therapist. Um, and so um, the, there's a lot of overlap between the two professions. Um, occupational therapy deals a lot more with what we call fine motor skills. So um, the way that I will usually explain it is um, if you hurt your hand, say, um, my role is going to be to try and get your hand stronger. Um, and then my wife will try and teach you how to use your hand. Um, and like, let's, and they will tend to work with, instead of necessarily having you do exercises, they will have you, um, she's going to get upset with me because I always say this, build a birdhouse, um, or do things, um, that then make you use it. Um, to regain those motor skills. Um, and so it's a lot of very specific things. When I did my rotations in the hospital, I always loved when the OTs worked with the patients because they would, let's say a patient had a stroke and they would reteach them how to cook and they would bake brownies and then we would all get to eat the brownies. And so this was great. <laughs> um, they would teach them how to... Um, take a shower again, how to get dressed again, how to do their laundry again. Whereas PT is, we were more focused on walking, going up and down stairs, building strength. Um, in the pediatric realm with, the, with kids, um, the OTs work a lot on handwriting. Um, and so if we were both working with the same child, um, she might have them draw pictures or trace outlines and I would have them crawl or throw a ball or do much bigger movements. And that's, that's really the, the big difference. Um, and they, there are other areas where they overlap where PTs can do a lot of the same stuff that OTs do. And then OTs can do a lot of the same stuff that PTs do, but that's the main difference. Um, let's see, we, so we do take students to volunteer, um, when there's no COVID stuff with COVID, unfortunately, we are not able to have anybody in the clinic, which has actually been, uh, 
a real bummer because I like having the students around. It's a lot of fun. Um, and so I actually, I really can't wait till we can, we can get back to that. It's also been hard because a lot of colleges require uh, observation hours or volunteering yeah. before going to school. Before even applying. Yeah. In so, order to, yeah. Now they have, a lot of them have waived that because they understand that it's hard to, to get. Um, but what we've been doing is if there's anybody who's interested in it, um, in going into it, uh, we basically uh, figure out a time where they can come. We give them a tour of the clinic and sort of go for a walk outside and chat about what we do and recommendations, what they want to do. Um, and we'll kind of like put them through a pretend treatment. Um, we just can't have them here while there are actually patients here. Um, so we sort of found a way around it. Justin, can I ask you a question? So sure. you're not only a physical therapist, you're an entrepreneur as well. So what is the business part of, of your day? Like, what do you have to do different from somebody who, yeah. <laughs> Emily's laughing because over the last three days, she's been like, it's like constant. Yeah. Um, so I am much to, much to my wife's dismay, the world's best multitasker. And so um, the business part, the way we have our business set up, um, we don't have any, um, office staff or receptionist or anybody else. So our PTs sort of handle everything. Um, and so we do everything from um, vacuuming to mopping the floor and cleaning the table between patients, calling people back. Um, I really think that when someone wants to schedule an appointment for PT, they should have an opportunity to talk with the person who's going to treat them before they come in. So I like the idea that we call everybody back and talk to them. Um, and then we do everything uh, it could be anything from paying bills to budgeting to um, uh, any, anything else that you could ever imagine. And um, I try my best to handle all of it between patients as time allows. Um, I do try and leave myself an hour during the day to do just that and focus just on the business stuff. Um, my favorite part of the business side of things is the marketing and advertising. Um, we do a ton of social media videos and blog posts and website design stuff. Um, I like the tech and IT side, and I think that is um, fun. Um, it also helps me justify a lot of my toys that I have. So um, my wife says, why do you need a drone? And I say, to film marketing videos. And then that seems to justify it. I'm pretty sure she knows I make it up, but um, that that's a, uh, a fun side of it. Um, it also gives us an opportunity to connect with people in a different way. So we have people that read our blog and follow our social media stuff from all over the world. And we can't necessarily treat them, but we can educate them and help them find people that can treat them. Um, and so I think that's that we spend a lot of time on that stuff. Um, we, you know, we did not get a lot of training in business in PT school. Um, in healthcare in general, the like business is almost treated as a bad word, um, which is not a good, uh, not a good thing. I don't, I don't think that's good. So I personally um, made an attempt to minor in business while I was in PT school. And then they told us that we weren't allowed to have a minor because we already had too many classes. And so I basically just went to the business school and told them that I wanted to minor in business, but my advisor wouldn't let me. And they just let me audit all the classes I wanted to take. So I would just go sit in on business classes um, and learn about marketing and learn about finance and accounting and what in the world a balance sheet is um, and those things. And so, um, I would encourage anybody who thinks they want to be involved in, in business to do that. Um, and then when I got out of school, you know, you could get jobs working in any number of different things. And I intentionally, after I left the hockey team, worked in very small businesses so that I could be very close to the owners who made the decisions and see that side of things. 
um, and know that it wasn't, uh, you know, being in a big company where you really didn't get to see it necessarily. I was going to say, I also, I believe that there are several PT programs that do uh, combine business information. Um, I didn't go to one of them, but I, I know some of my classmates were talking about interviewing at them. That's great. And I think um, for the students here, um, some of two, at least two of the classes that our business department offers that are helpful, regardless of what profession you go in would be money management, because it does go through the various types of expenses um, and billing that you would need just as a, you know, student going to college and adult um, and college career planning, obviously, because that um, will give you that inventory that Justin took and you don't even have to skip to the end and pick out this. Job. <laughs> <laughs> it can actually go back as many times as you want to figure out which one is right for you. Um, so they're, they're, those are really great courses and I know Several of the, the physicians that we've talked to have, have shared how those business business courses really are important. So I think for Justin to share his um, dedication and devotion to audit classes because he wasn't allowed to, to um, minor in them really speaks a lot to his devotion um, to, to his work and trying to be a, an overall better learner. So that's great. Um, we do have a few few remaining minutes. I'm not sure if there's anyone else um, that has questions that they would like to ask um, Justin or Emily. I, I have one. I know that I'm speaking next, so I'll take yeah. up my own time. Um, <laughs> my question, because there may be people who are listening that say, oh, I can be a, a PT aide. That sounds like a good way to start. Could you just, since you did that, the good, the bad, and the ugly of what to expect in that entry level position? Um, yeah, it's. I have a hysterical PT. So when um, my sister thought maybe she wanted to go to school to be a, a PT, a, a physical therapist, and I would come home from work, and she she would, oh, this sounds like a great job, and she had been a, a patient of PT for a long time as a um, uncoordinated athlete. And so she, um, she decided she came to work with me as a PT aide and, uh, you get to do anything and everything. And so you will see a lot of different stuff. And she went to look at a patient's knee who had just had a knee replacement and she saw the fresh staples and she passed out. Um, and she's now a speech pathologist. So, uh, <laughs> No staples in that career, but she, so yeah, you get to see anything and everything you, uh, it could be, your role could be anything from helping patients understand their exercises to helping them schedule their appointments to helping clean things up. Um, but yeah, you get to see, uh, you get to see anything and everything as an aide. Um, I thought it was a great thing to do before going to, to school to understand. Um, and you know, PT school is expensive. So you want to make sure when you get in there that it's what you want to do. Um, and especially for the straight through programs, uh, you can't necessarily transfer because you're only taking PT classes. Um, so we had very little gen ed classes from freshman year all the way through. Um, so yeah, the aid, the aids are great. Uh, it's a great position. It's uh, a good work environment working in a PT clinic. Um, you know, we're not very dressed up. Uh, and so you're comfortable. Um, I don't, I don't care. I don't think I own a pair of non running shoes. So, um, you get to wear comfortable shoes to work every day and you're always moving around. So I say, you know, you work with a lot of patients, but, um, everybody's different. Every hour is different. Um, I don't have a chair at my desk cause I never have to sit down. Um, so it's, it's a good active career. Excellent. Great question. And Lorraine, we, we do have um, time for you. Um, I'm not sure if Louise, you want, we always have time for you. Louise, if you want to um, just go back to the screen um, presentation, uh, again, we can uh, re remind everyone, Lorraine Kautz is from SUNY Duchess, and she's going to talk to you a little bit about the program of liberal arts sciences that it's available. At so, the well, and there's, there's a couple things that I just want to mention. Um, you know, our our LAX program, as we refer to it, is will give you some of those foundation courses that you need if you're transferring on to a bachelor's degree and, and moving up. You need to, um, you'll have to take biology, anatomy, physiology. Uh, at Duchess, 
if you're going to go along the ways of being a, a DPT, you know, a, like Justin, you're going to maybe take this program. If you're looking to be a physical therapist, you may take some of the prereqs here, the English or the psychology, developmental psychology, some, and, and as was mentioned, there's not a lot of general um, education classes that are needed. SUNY Orange does have a physical therapist assistant program as well as occupational therapy assistant programs. So you may do, um, some of those general classes here at Duchess and transfer there. These programs are very, very competitive. So applying and being ready to enter those, um, those, or even having some of those gen ed courses before you apply to the program is better. In Orange, I know that there's a campus in Newburgh, but these programs are all run out of Middletown, just so you know. Um, and then same if you're if you do your undergrad and then you decide or you're a career changer and you're going to uh, pursue physical therapy, you know, do your prereqs, get your biology, your anatomy, physiology, because even applying to Marist, uh, you're going to need to have all of that under your your belt before going into the program. Um, if you're doing AP biology, it, uh, a score of um, three or higher on that on that final test for Orange Community College is what they're looking for as part of their entrance into their program. Um, and that's it. Does anyone have questions about about that? A lot of a lot of our courses um, in LAX, you can see online Orange Community College. I, they do have the program. You can see their courses and their prerequisites online also for those assistant programs. Great, thank you. Thank you so much. And as always, with all the programs that we do, if you have a question afterwards and you're not sure who the right person uh, to ask is, you can always reply to the email that I send you or just email me directly at amy.watkins at wcsdny.org. You can always go on our website and find this presentation will be there as well as this video and all the previous videos. Um, and just as a reminder, the third Wednesday of every month, we do hold this series. So next month we are focusing on, we do have an occupational therapy coming and because uh, April is occupational therapy month. And we also have um, a neurologist, I believe um, that will be here uh, next month. So we hope that you can join us then. I wanna give a special thanks to Justin and to Emily always to Dutchess Community College Workforce Development Institute and um, the Workforce Investment Board for um, joining with Wappinger Central School District to uh, make these series possible. Justin and Emily, a wealth of knowledge and we really appreciate you taking the extra time to, to spend with us. Um, and as always, thank you, uh, Ms. Gorman for being with us during these series, um, it means the world to us. So um, if there are any other questions, I wanna wish everyone a wonderful afternoon. If you think of anything afterwards, please do not hesitate to reach out to me and I will be sure to connect you with the right person. Thank you everyone.